Good morning, friends. Welcome to another episode of the Faith Led Business Podcast Live. We are here back in North Carolina, and we're going to be talking about mentorship today. It could be the mentors that you use or you being a mentor for others. So come on down, grab your coffee, bring your friends, and I will see you over here in a bit. I'm thinking back on all those times When I feel close to from All that I could become Eager but to stay to climb Wanting to please my friends But it feel like the end of myself Instagram. So give me one second while I fix this. How are you all? I'm so happy to be back in North Carolina. Um, it was quite a trip this weekend and God is good. He does just the most amazing things for us. Like I'm telling you, every second of every day is an adventure with God. If you're looking for an adventure, um, become a believer. And there you go. Every single day is an adventure. I've got my um, Whom Shall I Send? Send Me shirt on today because I truly believe that through mentorship, which is what we're going to be talking about today, through mentorship, we do have that ability to create this, um, this beautiful web. It's kind of like a back and forth and a back and forth where you're looking to stretch yourself, you're looking to grow, you're looking to be more, and then God will place someone exactly to meet you at the point of your need. And I just love it. So let's take a look. Oh, it's so nice to see all your faces. I was going live at all strange hours the last few days, so it's nice to see the family back on here all together. Let's go ahead and let's take a look at Hebrews 13, 7. And this is what it says. Remember your leaders 
and imitate their faith. Imitate their faith. As you travel your Christian journey, it can take a lot of strength at times to keep going and just believing. It is literally a journey. It is literally a calling of you as a believer to walk through fire. Yet, you are untouched. One thing I learned that has helped me tremendously to stay strong, faithful, and forward-looking is a lesson I learned long ago. Make the faith of others a motivator. This is so, so important because as entrepreneurs, and especially, I don't know ladies, but women have this uncanny ability, tell me if you agree or not, this uncanny ability to run or want to run someone else's race. We're looking on the right, we're looking on the left, we're not looking only at their lanes that they're running on, we're checking out their outfits, we're checking out their hair, we're checking out their shoes, their running shoes, I mean, we do the whole scan. It's like those computers that just scan you up and down. And what God wants us to see is that there is a special place for mentors in your life. And that the people that you may see online as influencers or as, um, as just people maybe a step ahead of you. He wants you to glean from their faith. He wants you to see them and not see them as competition, but see them as what is possible for you. See them as, wow, if they can do it, then I can too. And let me tell you a little secret. A mentor doesn't have to be someone who's already successful in business. It could be someone who is successful in life. It could be someone who has conquered an addiction. It could be someone who was so consistent in their commitment to a specific new habit that they actually made it from A to Z. They lost the weight. They regained their health. They um, they became consistent, I don't know, in doing their devotionals, whatever it may be. That is not something to use because our first go-to is, let me compare myself to this person. They've got all this going on, they added in this other thing, and they're doing well at it, and I only have one thing and I can't even get my act together with that. Isn't that the normal way that we think? Isn't that so typical of the enemy to be whispering in your ear and show you someone that God has their hand on and twist that perspective to say, because they are here, therefore you lack. I am here to tell you today, this Tuesday morning, that you, my friend, lack nothing, zero. And you may say, but I don't have all the skills. You lack nothing, zero. And I'm going to say it until I'm blue in the face. I was talking with my friend Dina this morning and, um, and one of the things that we were discussing was dreams. And one of the things that I said back to her was, guys, the dream was never ours in the first place. That thing that you've been longing to do from day one, that gift that you have been given, it was never yours from the get-go. So why do you feel that you have to remodel it somehow if it's something that's not even yours, that's already perfect? in its own right, and even when it feels imperfect to you, 
There is a reason why he has you in that space of imperfection. It's for you to step into your calling, put your running shoes on, start running your race from a place of, I have no idea what the heck I'm doing. I kind of know how to do this, yet I am willing to run. And when we win the race in the end, when we reach our goals, there is absolutely nobody, nobody that we can give the glory to other than God. If it wasn't that way, it would be so easy for us to say, yeah, I prepared myself. I did this. I did that. So that's why this happened. I had a conversation yesterday with one of my um, collective members. That's my high-end mastermind group, mentorship group. And, uh, and she went and she did a presentation for uh, the Visibility Vault members last week. It was flawless. It was her very first live she had ever done. And it looked like she had spent hours and hours preparing for it. She didn't even have notes. She didn't have notes. Then she was able to speak and talk all this time. And I said, welcome to the club. Isn't it amazing? how God will give you the exact words that your audience needs to hear. And I have had moments where I have maybe tons of notes that I've written and what comes out maybe is one sentence out of like 10 pages of notes that I've written. Why? Because God's bigger plan, regardless of yourself, is going to be activated. It's going to play out. We have to understand who is in charge here of your dream. Your only job here is to accept it, to care for it, and to be willing to move forward with it. And the fact that there are mentors out there who have had the exact same experience that you are looking to have of growth in your business, of life experience, of faith, experience. It is a complete blessing to have those people in your life and I would literally seek those people out. You need more of those people in your circle. You need more of those people who know how to dream bigger, who know how to make God's dream bigger. Because we with our limitations and our inside the box mentality we will never have the opportunity to be a light in the darkness because we don't dare step out into the darkness because we don't feel we're prepared for it. It says here in this devotional, when I look to my pastors and other leaders in faith, I get so inspired by their tenacity, their courage, and their dependability. I think that if I can do it, then I, if they can do it, then I can do it as well. Although I can't imagine what it would be like to spend a lifetime cleaning the wounds of lepers and helping the lame in India, just like Mother Teresa's story tells us, it helps us believe that just maybe I can do half as much for humanity in my lifetime as she did hers. I think we don't take seriously what God has given us for our business because we may think, oh, I'm just right now thinking of my end of year goals. I've got one more, like a month and a half left. And then I'm projecting into 2021. Let's see what I can make of my business here. Let's see what, uh, what special offers, what special things I can use for my business. Let me have all that focus right there. And let me go into that just kind of scared and okay or excited or whatever it may be. And our mind is just focused on the right here. And we completely forget that your gift, that your dream, that everything that you possess is not even necessarily for this generation. What you are bringing to the table, my friends, and this is what these mentors who do bigger, who dream bigger, who see bigger, 
They're able to see what we are not able to see. And that is why they move into that fire without fear of getting burned. Because they know that it's not that, that seed that landed is not just going to bear fruit in this moment, in these next few months, when you get the money for that offer or even in the next year as you create those courses or you sell or you move up in your company, whatever it may be. That seed that is planted is not just for now. That seed is meant to bear fruit this season and the next and the next and the next. This is literally generational. It's generational. And remember, when we were talking about our, um, our heritage, right? And where maybe if we go and we check out who is in our lineage from the past and you find out there are these, all these crazy criminals and pirates <laughs> and people and you thought they were kings and queens, we have the ability with the help and inspiration of mentors to say it stops here. That craziness, that addiction, that mental illness, that um, <clears throat> those strongholds of poverty, both in money and in mindset, whatever it may be, it stops here. And what we do is we take a look at these mentors and say, that is what I want. That is what they have decided to do. It wasn't something that they did, honestly. It's something they decided. And I think we get so caught up in the, what did they do, what did they do, what did they do? Let me see if I can copy that. That we completely forget about the most important layer of this, the foundation of this is, what did they decide that I have not yet decided for myself, for my family, for my business, for my clients. What? What did they say no more? It stops here. From today on, I am a new creation. I carry the mind of Christ. I activate Holy Spirit within me. I move forward without fear. I am strong and I am courageous. I don't care what I see in front of me. It may be devastation. It may be sickness. It may be fear. But I know who's in charge here. And I am willing to step on the head of the serpent to show him who is boss in this story. And I am going to grab my own pen and I am going to be a co-creator with God in my business, just like all my mentors decided to do as well. Decision. Now, another thing about decision is integrity with your word. Because I will say for myself, I don't know how many times I have decided <laughs> to, uh, to make a change. And then I went ahead and I did the opposite the very next day or the very next hour. How many of us have been in that position where you're like, okay, it stops here. Uh, you know, the whole motivational thing I just said. And then the very next minute, you're over, and your mom, like last night, she made these yummy little bread things in the oven, and I was like, it was like literally like a tractor beam, <laughs> bringing it straight to my mouth. And so what are the decisions that we need to make to be like our mentors? What questions do we need to ask them to help us in being in integrity with our word? The beautiful thing about God is that he is so faithful, he is always in integrity. He is the ultimate mentor. 
Jesus is the ultimate mentor. He said what he meant, and he did what he said. Always. There's no backtracking for him. He was always moving forward. He was always looking to see who wanted what he had to offer, the big gift. And when people didn't want it, what happened? He moved on. He just moved on. He didn't wait to convince people. He didn't wait to see if, oh, maybe if I say it this way, if I say it in a nicer way, maybe if I say it that way, they'll get the idea. He spoke truth from his mouth. And if that truth landed on fertile soil, something grew there. Something changed there. A healing happened. A miracle came. And he moved on to the next and to the next. If we are looking to imitate people's faith, First, I want you to take a look at them and maybe even just go ask them, how did you decide? What was the process? What was the process that you made to be so consistent? If you ask me, it was, it's uh, been a very interesting experience. We're on day 327 of consecutive days of the Faith Led Business Podcast. How did that even happen? We're almost at the end. And if you ask me, Monica, how is it that you've been so consistent? You have eight kids. You run multiple businesses. You have a husband. You have a dog and two cats. Like, you have a house to clean. You have dirty laundry. What? Is, what? How? And I'll tell you something. How did I do it? just in this particular area of my life because I still have to grow and learn to be consistent in other areas, is I de my decision was I was not willing to be disobedient. When he said at the end of December last year, Monica, your word of the year is speak. And I had no idea what that meant. And then I heard you're going to do a daily devotional every day of 2020. And I said, but how? He said, just go buy a devotional on Amazon and start from there. I will give you the words. Don't even open it before you speak. Share the devotional the moment that you, you know, it'll be the first time for everybody, including you, as to what I have for you today. And I said, Dare I miss out on the journey that God has for me this year? Dare I miss out? And then as I started to walk in that from January to February to March to April to May, I started seeing him reveal to me things that I was not aware of. Things in a different realm that those who are not so committed don't get to see. Ways that God moves and connects the dots. And honestly, I'll tell you something if you want to talk about addictions. You want a good addiction? An amazing addiction is to be expectant of what God will do next. What will God do next? Your peepers, like, let me tell you, every single day, my eyes and my heart are wide open to see what God will do next. Because I've seen enough now. I have enough experience because I was willing to be obedient. That was my one decision, obedience. Obedience. Even if I had to show up in my PJs, no makeup, whatever it was, obedience. And it wasn't about even you guys. It wasn't about you guys. It wasn't about how can I serve my audience best? Because honestly, this whole journey, which, but of course, you know, I love you guys and I want to serve you. 
But this whole journey was to show me, was to show me what he can do with someone who is willing to be obedient. And he wanted me to share that process with you all. Because I'm telling you, I don't care what you say, you cannot convince me that God has not created entrepreneurs to be a powerful force for him in the marketplace. You cannot, I don't care what you do. The other day I was telling Chris and Sabrina when we were having dinner, I said through this year I've come to realize and I've made the decision that if I have to physically die in the process of getting this word out, it's what I need to do. When you get to that point of no turning back, no other options, no excuses, only operating, not in my truth, but is in his truth, I'm telling you, it's like walking around with a force field around you. It's like walking around with a force field. Nothing can touch you. It doesn't matter what anyone says. Before, words used to hurt. Before people who would push my buttons, it would push my buttons. And ever since this started, all of a sudden, I've gone buttonless. And instead, I've opted and I've been able to see people through the eyes of Christ. Their potential. And I'm no longer buying people's stories. And if you speak with me on a one-on-one -on -one coaching session, you will see I'm a little rougher than I used to be. Monica's always been known to be very, you know, comforting and huggy and that kind of thing. And this it's because I understand now the urgency. The urgency that God has in this day and time, in this generation, to have his entrepreneurs, let's go. Let's go. Let's step up into the game. He's calling you into the huddle. He wants to show you the next play. And he's putting mentors around you so that you can see how they walk out their next play. Because he wants you to do the same in your business, in your life, with your family, with your clients. There are no longer excuses. There's only a what's next. It's a bigger picture. We have gone outside of the box now. And this weekend, when I was in Ohio, and we opened the Second Sanctuary Girl store, there was this huge revelation. The truth is, my friends, people are no longer going into the four wall church. Therefore, they don't get to meet Jesus because they're not actively going. It's up to us. Now, God, can, like I said, I've said this before, God can do anything he wants, right? It's not like he's waiting on us in order to reveal his son, right? <laughs> that's, that's not even an issue. But he's so good to us that he, gets, he lets us participate in this experience. That's what it is. It's a win-win. You get called. You walk in your calling. And you get to live in your purpose. And see others do the same as well. Like my good friend Tara says, it's no longer about buying and selling. It's about sowing and reaping. I want each and every one of you to reap what you have sown in Jesus' name. And so mentorship is so important. I need each and every one of you to have a mentor, to find a mentor that is going to show you what it looks like to walk in faith. Not in faith in myself, because there's so much personal development out there. I get it. That's nice, but it's not enough. It's not enough because it always lands on me. And I will always make mistakes because I'm not perfect. 
But if I tap into Holy Spirit who is in me and will guide my words and will guide my thoughts and will guide my next action and will download the next strategy for my business, then it's a whole other ballgame. Now I am gleaning on the ultimate mentor who is Holy Spirit. And I'm checking in with my mentor daily, all the time, consistently, throughout the day to make sure that I am spending my time wisely because our time here on earth is limited. And we want, we want, as humans, we all want belonging, right? We all want people to feel proud of us. When I see God, I want him to say, well done, good and faithful servant. I'm not willing to miss out on that. I'm not no longer looking. This is just an example for you guys. I'm no longer looking at what's available for me here. I'm, wor I'm looking at what's available for me there. And that makes my experience here completely different. That makes the decisions here completely different. That makes my conversations with my clients here completely different. And that is what I want for you. It is. And I know you can have it. I know you can feel it. I know you can tangibly experience it. And so today, as we move on our day, I want you to decide to find a mentor or some mentors who will show you this. Who will be this for you? Who will be your example of what it looks like to walk in faith? And then I want you to make the decision that you, no matter how new you are to faith, no matter if you've never opened the Bible, I want you to be, decide to be someone's mentor. I want you to decide to be that for someone else. As my friend uh, Michelle, who is over in Ohio this weekend, she says she always uses the uses the hashtag uh, "Make Jesus Famous," right? How can we actively do that? Are you willing to draw your line to make sure? That people don't just know your, your business, your logo, but his logo imprinted on your heart. His logo imprinted in your mind. His logo imprinted in your words of life, in the words of truth that you will speak over them and you will cover them with. I want his logo all over me. So tell me in the comments, do you have a mentor like that? Or write down, I need to find one. Because it's important. We are not meant as humans to do this alone. We aren't. We are meant to do this together. Because together you get more done faster. And we are the body of Christ. Let's lift this up. Let's lift ourselves up. It's a very, very important thing. I see some of you say, I need to find one. I do. Yes. Find someone who's going to inspire you to walk in faith. And I think it's, uh, it's a priority because many of the mentors that we have chosen to follow, while they're awesome, while they have amazing mindset, while they have amazing success in business, they're missing the one key thing they're missing Christ. 
And what we are doing as entrepreneurs is not just any old, oh, in their lifetime they have this business. Mm -mm. It's much bigger than that. It's much bigger than that. And so I want you to have someone who will show you how you can integrate business and faith. When I started off this devotional at the beginning of the year, it didn't um, start off as a faith in business. It was just a devotional. And about three months in, God said, let's start connecting the dots. There is a reason why I had you for 20 something years, 27 years or something, in the business world. And there is a reason why you got your degree in religious studies and originally you wanted to be a pastor. And now let's connect the dots. Let's learn how to put both together. Find the mentors who believe the way you want to believe and have them inspire you. Have them inspire you. Thank you, Sylvia. <laughs> Sylvia is part of the collective. She says, the collective group has an awesome mentor. I appreciate you. So here we go. Let's get this day started. I don't know about you, but I am kind of excited today. I am so excited to see what God will do today. I saw some crazy amazing things this weekend that he was able to do. And so let's get our day started. Today's Techie Tuesday. I'm going to bring you a fun Techie tutorial later on today on the Faith Led Business page. Let's pray this day in and let's make sure that, uh, that we are all on one accord with Holy Spirit as we get our work day started. So here we go. Father God, we just thank you that you would bring each and every one of us to this podcast because you have a special word for us. You say it's important to learn from your mentors. And I agree with that. I know that's true. But even more so, I know that you see mentorship in us. And when we say, I could never be a mentor, we are killing the dream the dream that was yours, the dream that you planted in our hearts from day one. And we are daring to put our own limitations on your dream. And so, Father, we ask to remove ourselves from the equation so that we can only see what's in front of us through your eyes, through your lens. Let us bear witness to what it looks like to walk in faith, to what it looks like to be bold, strong, and courageous, to what it looks like to have a spirit of power, of love, and a sound mind, where fear is eliminated. Fear is no longer an option. Fear has been overcome. And where we as mentors are able to take other people to a place that they could never in a million years imagine. A place of fulfillment, a place of purpose, a place where they are surrounded with love, with healing, with victory. And so we are excited today, Lord, to put ourselves before you and say, that is who I want to be for others. And I'm going to learn it. I know you're going to place the person that I need to learn this from in front of me. I'm going to learn it. And so, Father, we are just thankful. We are expectant. We put your healing hand over each and every person listening to the sound of my voice. That every ache, that every pain, that every stronghold, that everything that has them binded by the enemy be broken loose in this moment, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Father God, I know Holy Spirit is more than able, more than willing 
and is excited to be part of each and every one of our lives. May we each accept you individually, make the decision to make him part of our business, to make him part of our family. Help us, Lord, to keep moving forward in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me this morning. It's great to be back home and uh, see the family and the kids and just have all of my techie stuff around me. It just feels, <laughs> it feels safe. It feels nice uh, to be able to have all my stuff. And I'm just super excited to see what he is going to do um, with each and every one of us on this journey to be motivational mentors. So thanks guys. I will be back later on today, probably between three and four. I will be posting a techie tutorial for you guys since it's Techie Tuesday and that's what we're all about. And um, I will be talking to you all soon. Have a fantastic day. If you are not yet part of the text squad, text squad, go ahead and message me. Say, hey, hey, at um, 1408-539-9611. You will get um, a little reminder notification when I when I come live because it's not always the same time. You can thank all my children and um, and anything else that may come along. I like sometimes sending little voice notes to you guys, and um, and it's a great time. And if you do message me back, it doesn't go to the whole group; it just comes to me. So once again, it's uh, four zero eight. 539-9611. And if you are out of the area, you just add the one in front of that. All right, guys, God bless. Any prayer requests, feel free to put them in the comments and our community will stand by you. All right. Have a fabulous day. Love you all. I'll catch you later. Bye.